welcome you to the Nims barn. Uh, the Nims brothers were early settlers in Montgomery County. Uh, they used to be, they were two brothers, John and Dwight Nims. They came here early in the 1880s and built two uh, matching farms, basically. Uh, this barn was built in 1884. <laughs> John was in Emerson, or just south of Emerson over in Mills County, and Dwight was actually over the line into Montgomery County, so it kind of makes a shared thing between us and, and Glenwood's Historical Society over there. Now, some of the things here, you're going to see old vintage pictures of the barn, uh, showing them with horses. This was very much in the horse-drawn uh, era. Uh, some of the really interesting things about the NIMS, and maybe I should introduce myself first <laughs> before we get too far. I'm Dave McFarland. I'm the executive director here, and we always have kind of a standing joke about it. Uh, the assistant director is my wife, so I always tell people I'm the director and she's the boss. <laughs> but um, she's quite a lady with a lot of talent when it comes to photography and doing displays. Uh, some of this is her handiwork on these kiosks. The Nims were famous for their seed corn, uh, pre uh, premium yellow dent seed corn, uh, one of the earlier ones, and you can see by the photographs how large these ears were. And they used to have drying racks in the barn, and we have the corn crib next door from the farm. And they went all over with this corn. People from eastern Nebraska, uh, western Iowa came to buy the seed corn. That was a big part of their life. And kind of... <laughs> Kind of to point out kind of the irony of some of these things is Grace Nims used to be one of our volunteers here. She's the granddaughter of John and Dwight, or John actually. Uh, she worked here for a number of years. Now this is some other things about them getting their farm started. Uh, this was one of the new houses. This was the one that was actually in Montgomery County. This was John's house that was actually in Mills County, built as you can see 1881, 1882. It is actually still there and still on the farm, but it's been remodeled so many times that you probably wouldn't recognize it unless somebody told you. The, sadly, Dwight's house is gone. Uh, one of the th goals that we had was to set up the entire farmstead here, including a farmhouse, but that's some of the future things. Uh, some of these really great displays that we have that we use for our guests and school kids is like this on harvesting corn. We talk about uh, how they used to pick it by hand, uh, horse-drawn equipment, then we go to tractors and everything, and then finally with the combines. And I realized this last, uh, last year when we were doing our Ag in the Barn Day that some of our pictures are getting kind of outdated. We've got four row head combines and eight row planters that John Deere doesn't even make anymore. <laughs> uh, you can see here in front of the kiosks, this is always a big catch for people. These are hand planters. And they used to talk about that a good farmer could plant seven acres in a day with one of these hand planters. Uh, I'm not sure how they did it. <laughs> uh, you'll see all kinds of interesting things in here in the barn. Uh, seed sorters, our haystackers, the uh, implements we talked about earlier that were found buried in the hay in the barn. Oh, back here is our blacksmith shop that came here from Coburg. Uh, check planter back here, all sorts of horse-drawn equipment. And if you can endure, we'll show you some other things as we progress. Now we've moved down to the south end of the barn, the lower level. Uh, this barn's really unique because it has a raised center in it and no hay doors on the ends. Uh, you brought the hay and grain in from the sides of the barn. And so, like I said, we're down here on the south end of the barn. Uh, and of course, no barn from the 1800s would be complete without a team of horses. Uh, we, that's kind of our philosophy on it. So we, we went long and hard search and found our set of horses. Uh, we've been working at, we've got all kinds of harness and displays on horsepower, <laughs> real horsepower. And so you can come in and kind of see the heart of the farm right here. This is how it worked. 
After this, we can take you over to the north side of the barn and introduce you to our traveling cow. Now, we're over to the north uh, lower level of the barn, and this is one of our really popular items. This is our traveling cow. We kind of argue about what her name is, but uh, we all think of her rather affectionately, and you might even notice she has her calf with her. They make quite a pair. Uh, the interesting thing about this cow is she's life size, and if you notice, she has a trap door. <laughs> uh, we open this door up, and you can place uh, milk or water, whatever you want to use, into a reservoir, and then she can actually be milked. Uh, this has been a huge, huge hit. And if you want to learn about agriculture and farm life, this is a big piece of it. Uh, I mentioned that we call her the traveling cow. Uh, we've been real generous about sharing her. We really get a lot of enjoyment out of letting other communities. Uh, Adair County uses her quite often up there. Um, Audubon, uh, Atlantic, all the different local counties will come down and we will let you borrow her. Uh, for special events and stuff like that. I had to laugh. Uh, they were down the other day and got her, and they said that one of the events they were holding up in Adair County, they said whenever they say they're going to have um, an agricultural-based event or something, the first thing is, is everybody wants to know if the cow is going to be there. <laughs> so they've got it down to a science on how to move her and everything like that. But So she does a lot of moving around and traveling. It's kind of a unique item for, for Southwest Iowa. There used to be one at the Henry Doily Zoo. Um, they've kind of changed that around, and I, uh, she's no longer, theirs is no longer there at this current time. Uh, probably the closest one would be the Iowa State Fair to find anything similar to this. But this is a big piece of what farming used to be and everything and the uses of the barn. Uh, we have associated items in here. Uh, stools for milking, uh, buckets, cream separators, all of this sort of thing. Uh, I was telling Dean uh, we had a, a wonderful visit a few years back when we were on the Iowa Barn Tour. We had a uh, young lady that had just gotten married to an Iowa farm boy and she didn't really know a lot about cows or agriculture or anything like that. We kind of laughed about that she's the sort that thinks chocolate milk comes from brown cows. <laughs> well, we were able to educate her, but the really fun part about the whole deal is the grandmother was with her, and 90 years old, and she took the one-legged milking stool and plopped it down on the floor and proceeded to show us all a thing or two about milking cows. <laughs> it was great. Um, she actually got a special gift for that. <laughs> Uh, so you can kind of see the, the barn is really unique, uh, a lot of different things here. It's a peg and tenon barn. Uh, I always have fun telling the kids about this, how you, you took and cut these timbers and then drilled a hole and drove a crooked wooden peg in it. And it was very important that the peg be crooked so it would stay in place. Uh, this barn has been through numerous tornadoes and windstorms and all sorts of things like that, and she still stands pretty strong and proud. And that's not bad for being 100, uh, from 1884, being over, well over 100 years old. Uh, this is just kind of a teaser, I hope, for you to get you to come to the Montgomery County History Center and spend some time and enjoy yourself and learn a few things or maybe just nostalgia and remember, remembrances of things that you did in your youth. That's what a lot of people do. And so you can look us up on the internet at Free Web's Montgomery County History Center or call us at 712-623-2289 or just stop by. We're open here every day from 11 to 4 or by appointment except for Monday.